what we will be doing today will be looking at a Google CTF or rather a Google CTF qualification round, which happened, I don't know, like two weeks ago, something like that, maybe three weeks ago. Time flies. It was pretty hard as usual. That's pretty typical, I guess, for Google CTF, right? It's one of the most challenging CTFs out there. So yeah, let's go today through Hackcelerate teaser two and one. This is actually the same binary. It's based on the Hackcelerate game from last year. Last year, it was finals in Tokyo. And then there you had like multiple teams who had to, well, hack a game. And they had like, I don't know what the time was, like one, one hour to do that. We had, uh, two challenges like this um, in this CTF, so I'm just going to download it. And it also says here like how to connect to the game server. The way Hackcelerate game works, so the game is basically like it's a client server architecture, but it's a single player game, which is I guess if we, we would have be having this stream like 20 years ago, you would be like, why does it need to connect to a server, right? But nowadays you're just like, yeah, yeah, it's just another game, which is a single player, but it still wants to connect to some server for whatever reason. But in Hexelroid, that actually has a really special, there's a special reason for that. And that reason is that anti-cheating, basically. You are supposed to hack the game, find the actual logic flaws in the game and exploit them. So this is more of what speedrunners do, where they like abuse glitches in games. So we have like this client server architecture and the, like uh, every time you move on the client, you send the state to the server. And then you arrive at like the new state and if the state states are identical, that means the player did not cheat. At the same time, because the server and the, the client are running the same code for the logic, if there is a bug, the bug is in both places, which means you can exploit the bugs, no problem, it's just like you cannot cheat. So I downloaded the game, I, I extracted it, it's just a zip file. It's, it's Python. This game is in Python. So yeah, uh, this is Mew, and Mew is uh, in the city, and Every like uh, every block is a different a different like level basically I think level is the term which is used internally. The first thing to do even if, before you start hacking the game is to figure out where are the flags. We know there are two challenges right because you can see that on the scoreboard and it's also written in the description. What they say here is Hacksaw 2023 was so much fun we added modifications to the original game and they actually link to the original game because the original game was open sourced. So we can go to the original game and we can download these files and then we can start basically, well, diffing the files and seeing what changed. The important things are maps, basically. So the maps have like this TMX extension and TMX stands for Tiled Map XML. And uh, Tiled is this amazing map editor. If you go to mapeditor.org, then you have you have tiled and this is an open source pretty amazing uh, map editor for like simple games and now we have tiled basically opened okay quick introduction to tiled we have properties of a given object here so if we click on something uh for example like this so it says it's a weapon and then it shows you like what are basically the properties of this weapon right now we have also layers here one type of layer is you can have object layer where you put like objects, like an enemy, a weapon, a collectible, like an item, player position, portals, and so on and so forth. And then you have tiled layers, which are just bitmaps. They're basically bitmaps of tiles, right? Like as the name implies, it's a tile, so it, like it's this rectangle with a proper texture and you can just like draw of them. The way these levels work, by the way, is that you start at the start point. This is the start point. This is where the player is located at the beginning. And then there's an exit point and uh, which is which is I guess here. This is the exit area. So if you reach here, you exit the level. So what we can do is we can basically try to figure out like which files changed. So we have like these two directories. One is with the original Hexcelerate. Uh, second one is with the uh, current Hexcelerate, which is called 2023 for whatever reason, but it's 2024, of course. And this is double commander. So I'm going to enter both directories and I'm going to tell it to just do synchronize directory. And what it does when I tell it to synchronize directory, it just shows me like which files don't match. Yeah, I have only, I'm only limiting this to Python files, but let's look for TMX files. We have a couple of levels which changed. Well, actually almost every level changed. So let's go one by one. Let's start by this one and let's click compare here. And Meld will just tell us like what changed. Some item goggles were removed in the new version, apparently. Magnet was removed in the new version. And Nugler hat was, if you're wondering what's Nugler hat, that's a 
a baseball cap with in like Google colors with a, like a, a propeller blade on top. Pretty, pretty classy, yeah. But only items were removed. This is important. Like nothing seemed to be added. This is pretty boring. Honestly, like this level looks pretty boring. Probably that's not where the flags are. Let's go to Rusty and let's check Rusty. Compare a property of the weapon. The weapon was flipped and now it's not flipped. And this weapon now does 1000 damage. So this is a pretty powerful weapon. And then we, the flag was added. Okay, so the flag was added and I guess this is already a pretty good telltale for us. But yeah, on, on the Rusty level, this is where we need to look. Then we have a water level, so let's uh, take a look and melt again. So what was added was a moving water platform number 29 and a flag number, which is item number 31. This is what was added and that's it. There are no other changes in this map. I'm pretty sure this is the first task in this case. And now what I can do is I can go to objects and then look for flag and the flag is apparently here. So which kind of means we just have to go to and get the flag, right? Like easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So we have this uh, poison here, which I can, yeah, with, oh, oh thank you, with uh, space I can lift. Now I, ha I have health here, which is at 90, and if I use the poison, it just poisons me, it decreases my health by one. Okay, and we are safely here, now the fire is burning us. This fire has a pretty high range. There's another enemy here which is also looking at me and this is unfortunate. Stop looking at me. This is kind of hard. So first thing we'll have to deal with is like uh, make sure we don't need to... Wow, I'm 25 HP. This is not good. And it starts looking at me again and it flipped my controls. So yeah, the first thing we have to deal with is like we actually have to disable changing left right and up and down when these cameras look at me and like get this uh, get this reverse controls icon because we are not going to get too far so let's start exploring the the code now if we could figure out how this camera enemy this is what it was called right camera enemy oh it's called evil camera oh yeah here we go evil camera can it shoot yes yes i did see but it can shoot it hit us a couple of times so in enemy there is like check control inversion. It gets the game object, you know, the game state, the current game state. And if the player, if there's no player, then don't do anything. Otherwise set inverted to false. For every object in the game, if the type of this object is enemy and it's not dead and it has this control inverter set to true, and it sees the player. Okay, so apparently there's like sees player. Yeah, so if it sees, then it we set inverted to true. And this is the player file. So I guess like everything related to player is, uh, is here. And we need to look for control, inverted controls. I'm sorry, not control inverter. There we go. If D key is pressed and A is not pressed, then computed direction is direction east. If is not inverted because if it's inverted then we go west this absolutely sounds like inversion and this is something we have to we have to get rid of and then we are calling this change direction which i'm guessing the change direction is just like switching you know the animation or something like that or like uh, switching the player to be able to bypass this we have to bypass this right now because like otherwise if we don't bypass this we cannot really move the issue is that we need to modify it in such a way that the server will actually not complain about it because if i would just like modify it here like just remove this like like yeah like direct direction is east and that's it just remove it the server still would have this part of code and it would still run and then the server would say hey the state which i calculated is not the same state which the player sent me which means yeah player is cheating and we have to disconnect the player given that yeah we cannot just like remove this which would be the easiest thing to do Instead, what we have to do is we have to, I think, change the keys. If we, our code detects that inverted controls is actually set, then instead of like sending the key D, we send the key A to, to this. And we do it like really early in the logic loop. So, but the server like also, because the server gets, again, two things. It gets the 
what buttons were pressed by the player in the stick and uh, the state which was calculated by the player so that the server can apply the same buttons to its own state and calculates its the new state and compared to what the player says the state is supposed to be. Which means that if we change the, the keys, that's fine, because we can change, if we change the keys early on in the loop before they are sent to the server, then it's, it's fine because all the calculations are going to be just done on the new key, so we, this is what we can do. Now the question is, what is this pressed key? And this is something which is uh, sent to update movements, apparently. And where is this called? Okay, so it's called in tick. So we need to take a look where player tick is being called. And if we look at this, what we see here is that it, it just uses like this player object, which means if we look for player.tick, I'm guessing, uh, which is what we have to look for. So let's do that. That's our grab for uh, player.tick. And it's in lucider py, which is in the top level directory. Okay player.tick. There we go. Okay, if a player exists, then we call a tick with pressed keys. Perfect. So let's see what's going on here. We are initializing the random number generator. We tick it and we get the raw pressed keys. And then the raw pressed keys, there's some magic going on here with the pressed keys. And we are calculating the actual pressed keys, which kind of means that if we do anything, I'm kind of guessing we have to do it before, like somewhere here. Like actually, technically we, we, sh we have to do it like here, right? Like somewhere here. But I'm just going to like bundle it like that and I'm going to do it here. So, um, cool. What's in this uh, pressed keys thingy? Uh, print. Print is, you know, the best debugger, right? Okay, so knowing this, we can just run the game. And uh, we can already see it's a set. So if I press D, okay, it's 100. 97. That sounds a little bit like uh, ASCII codes. Okay, well, uh, I... okay, that was escape. So we kind of know what uh, what to do next time. So thank you, folks, in that case. And uh, yeah, if you want to try, I think this is the, a good moment also to stop because like you kind of are already, you kind of know what you have to do. And uh, if you want to check it out, it's in the MISC, Hackstall, right, teaser category in, the, in, in Google CTF. So yeah, best of luck. Bye-bye. I wish you a great day. Cheers.